Hello again, and welcome to another Unity and FMOD tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at using 3D FMOD events within custom c -sharp scripts in Unity. So, as always, let's jump straight into it. So, um, if you've ever tried to play a 3D event in a script, um, you usually get a little error down here that says um, you need to uh, basically tell Unity that you're using 3D FMOD events. Um, normally, if you wanted to use a 3D event or 3D sound, you could just use the event emitter, which does work, works really well, um, but it only gives you a limited amount of options to play the sound on. Um, say, for example, you wanted to play a sound on a button press. So, for example, as you can see here, this script I've got set up, I've got it to play the sound when the button E is pressed. If you wanted to do that and you wanted the sound to be 3D, um, the studio event emitter would be no good for you. Um, maybe perhaps you do want to use one of these, but you want there to be a time delay. Again, that's something you wouldn't be able to do. So being able to use 3D events with a custom script is really helpful. So what I've done, to remove that, what I've done is I've set up, I've just placed a little cube in our world here. This is our player. Um, and I've set up the script so that when I press E, um, a sound will be played. It's just a random sound I've pulled from my library. I think it's a gunshot. Um, so let me quickly demonstrate what that sounds like. So if I stand to the left of the box and press E, we hear the sound in the right. By the way, as always, wear earphones for 3D sounds for the best results. If I stand in front of the box, we hear it right down the center. And if I stand to the right, we hear it to our left, okay? So if I quickly jump into FMOD, all I've done for sake of demonstrating this is I've created a 3D event uh, like that by right clicking, click new event, which is here, 3D test. I've just chucked my audio in and left it like that. You can edit the attenuation graph and all, all of these panner stuff if you like, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just leaving it like that. So let's jump back into Unity and actually let's have a look at the script. So. Uh, so the first thing I've done is something we did in our footstep script, which is I've referenced the fact I've well, first of all, I've wrote a public string uh, and called it select sound. So we can go in unity and pick our sound from here. Um, and I've also added the fmod unity dot event reference on top of that. So it knows that we're looking in fmod for a sound. Then I've wrote fmod dot studio dot event instance sound event. And on start, I've basically used the create instance uh, line to hook the two together. Now, normally that's all you would need. Um, for a 2D sound, that's essentially all you would need. But I've also added this line on the void update function. Now, basically what this line does is it's saying that it wants to get the information from the transform component and the rigid body component of wherever our uh, FMOD listener component is. So if I jump on our player, uh, this is where I have our studio listener, sorry, studio listener component, which is what you use in FMOD. Uh, and I've also got a rigid body on here and a transform component. So what this script is doing is basically reading, checking those two, uh, and depending on their values compared to our box, which is where the audio is going to be played from, it's going to adjust the audio accordingly. So attenuation curves are going to be adjusted, volume, uh, any, uh, maybe some filters if you were to add that. Um, so that's what that does. So we use that every uh, frame, so it's constantly checking uh, in case we move our player. Uh, and the same works if you put the um, if you put the script on a movable object. Let's say this cube just moved back and forth. Uh, the same thing would happen. We notice the sound change as the cube moved. So that's the that's the vital piece of code that allows us to use three D sounds. As you can see, every frame on void update, I've told Unity. Or so, yeah, I've told C Sharp to. Um, play the play sound function, which when I press a certain key, uh, which I've assigned to E, uh, it will play the event. Okay, simple. So that's what you. Oh, and you use the public key code uh, variable to assign your button press. Okay, simple. So uh, that works fine, but if we wanted the audio to loop, this would be a problem. What we need to do is because it's checking every frame to see if the button's pressed and to say, you know, play the sound. Um, we want to set up a way that we play the sound when say the button's being held or pressed. Um, 
and we want it to loop, but we don't want it to play every frame. So every frame, if I held E down, at the moment I've just got it set up to uh, input.get key down. So when I press the button, it's going to play the sound. Uh, but if I was to hold the button down, um, we wouldn't want the sound or a looping version of the sound to play every frame because then we'd just get loads of sound stacking on, on top of each other, which isn't what we want. So to combat this, we're going to use, uh, I'm going to quickly copy the script and add it on here. I don't know, I sadly don't know off the top of my head. <laughs> there we go. So we're going to use the FMOD Studio playback state. Uh, this is the variable here and I've just called it FMOD PB state. Uh, and then we are going to link it to our sound event, which we made earlier, and then say, um, when this is playing, we want the, or rather, when the sound isn't playing, when the sound event isn't playing, we want it to play. So then when it is playing, it won't play, okay? So the idea of a playback state is to basically do just that. It checks to see if the audio is playing or not. And then you can perform functions such as this one and say, uh, if it isn't playing, then we want you to play. Um, and vice versa, if it is playing, we don't want you to play. Uh, I'm also going to add one more little line. Let's chuck that in here. Cool. So this is just set saying on uh, when the key, when I pull my finger off of E, uh, get key up, we want the sound to stop. Uh, and this is how you tell FMOD that we want sounds to stop, okay? So I'm going to save that. Last we're going to do, jump back into FMOD, and I'm going to quickly add a loop region. So this track will loop when it is played. We'll make it about that long. Let's see how long that is. Maybe a bit shorter, that's a bit too long. Let's try that again. Okay, that's about right. So let's save that. Quick build. Jump back into Unity, uh, compile the script we just saved. Cool, clear all that. Let's test it out. So, let's press play. There we go. So, if I hold E now, there we go. So we can hear it looping. And if I release E, it stops looping. And then again, if I come around to the front of it and hold E, it loops, move around continue looping cool so hopefully that's been helpful like I said usually we just use the uh, fmod event emitter but this helps if you want to um, if you want to play the sound maybe on a different uh, cue uh, maybe you want time delay before the sounds played or maybe you want to just have a bit more flexibility um, and control over your 3d events uh, this is a very very simple way of doing it I'm sure you know there are other other ways of calling 3D events, but it seems to work for most things I've tried it for. So hopefully this has helped you out. Um, feel free to let me know what you want to see next. Um, I'm going to do uh, some more. I have some more ideas for these Unity and FMOD tutorials. Um, so if that's what you're interested in, please, you know, keep checking out this <laughs> site for more tutorials. Uh, and I'm also going to do some more sound design tutorials. So messing around with some, maybe some more... Um, creative sounds less realistic sounds so maybe some sci-fi sounds or some monster rolls i might mess around with uh, so let me know if any of that interests you uh i've been henry scott and thank you for watching